This is the video for assignment 91, math lesson 12.2. In the 12th unit, we will be talking about probability. Now, when we talk about probability, it has to do with things like this. If you flip a coin, what is the probability of each of these events occurring? Remember when we talked earlier in the school year about words that we might use to describe the chance of events happening, like impossible, equally likely, or that could also be considered 50-50 chance, certain. When you think about these things, where would you place the events of this coin flip on this number line? Okay, when you, when you think about probability, you always have to think about how many possibilities are there. That's kind of like the denominator of your fraction. So if you're looking at a coin, you know that there are two possibilities. You can either get heads or you can get tails. So what's the probability that you would get a head? Equally likely, right? Because um, it's 50-50 chance whether you get a head or a tail. So likewise, getting a tails would be equally likely as well. How about a head or a tail? You know that it has to be one or the other, so it is certain that you will get either a head or a tail if you flip a coin. How about neither? Right, that's impossible. You're either going to get a head or a tail. It's impossible to get neither. I guess some people would like to think that a coin could perfectly land on its edge, but I don't think that's going to happen. Let's take a look at this. What is the probability? Okay, Let's say we have cards, and the cards have letters on the front, such as the word probability, or we can mix them up. It really doesn't matter. Now, in order to figure out what's the probability of choosing these options, either a consonant, a vowel, or the letter B, the first thing you always have to know is how many total cards do we have? So if you count them, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, we can see that we've got 11 cards all together. So the number of cards is 11. And then we can figure out what's the probability of choosing for example, a consonant. Well, let's sort these first of all. How many vowels do we have? Our vowels are in black for us. One, two, three, four. So we've got four vowels and we've got seven consonants. Okay. What's the probability of choosing a consonant? Right, how many out of the 11 cards? Seven. Seven out of the 11 cards are consonants. So therefore, the probability of choosing a consonant is 7 elevenths, or 7 out of 11. Okay, you can read that fraction either way you choose. How about the probability of choosing a vowel? Right, 4 out of the 11 cards are vowels. So the probability of choosing a vowel is 4 out of 11, or 4 elevenths. How about the probability of choosing the letter B? Well, there are two Bs in the word probability, so you have a 2 in 11 chance. Notice that a lot of times we represent probabilities with fractions. Sometimes when working with probability, we might use spinners. And when you make a spinner, you have to make sure that your segments are equal sizes, okay? What is the probability of spinning blue for each of these spinners? Well, this spinner is completely blue. It's not possible to land on anything but blue. So the probability that we're going to land on blue is 100% or 1. How about this one? It doesn't have any blue at all. So the probability of landing on blue 
there's a zero probability. How about this one here? It has six blue segments out of eight total segments. So six out of eight, that would be the fraction six eighths. If we reduce that, we know that six eighths is also equivalent to three fourths. So where would we put it on our number line? Right here at the three fourths mark. Now let's take a look at this one right here. How many blue segments does this spinner have? This spinner is located right here on the number line. How many blue segments would it have if it's at one-fourth, meaning one in four are blue? One-fourth is equivalent to how many eighths? Two eighths, right? One fourth is the same as two eighths. We are showing that one in four of these are blue. And let's see if we got that right. Yep, two blue segments, and our others are correct as well. Sometimes probability questions look like this. What is the probability of picking a red ball? Okay, well, remember I told you we always need to know how many possibilities there are in all. So we need to know how many balls we have here. So if we count them up, we have 10 balls. Now they're telling us that the probability of picking a blue ball is 3 tenths, or 3 out of the 10 balls are blue. So I'm going to color three of these balls blue. The probability of picking a green ball is one in five, one-fifth. Well, one in five is equivalent to how many in ten? Two-tenths, right? If the rest of the balls are red, what is the probability of picking a red ball? Well, how many of these balls would be red? One, two, three, four, five. So the probability of picking a red ball would be five out of 10, or five tenths, which is also one half. Let's try this activity. Let's spin the spinner eight times and compare theoretical and experimental probability. Now theoretical probability means we know that the percentages or the fractions should work out according to how many segments there are and how many total segments there are. But you know that when you do an experiment, sometimes your experiments don't work out exactly according to the numbers like like you know it says it should so what I mean by that is this let's say we're talking about how many times the spinner lands on green if we look at this we can see that four out of the eight segments are green so it has a probability of four eighths however if we spin the spinner eight times let's see if we actually get exactly four now, while I spin the spinner, I want you to keep tally marks so we know where it lands, because we're going to record whether it lands on green or red or purple. Okay, our first spinner landed on green. Our second spin landed on green. Our third spin landed on green. Our fourth spin landed on purple. 
our fifth spin lands on green. Our sixth spin lands on green. Our seventh spin lands on green. And our eighth spin also lands on green. So if you were keeping tallies for those, what I got was we had seven greens, zero reds, and one purple. So if we had been tasked with that problem and we needed to record what actually happened was seven eighths were green, zero eighths were red, and one out of the eight was purple. Now, why didn't they work out perfectly? In theory, it, I should get green four out of eight times, and I should get red one out of eight times, and I should get purple two out of eight times. Well, if I were to spin this spinner a thousand times, I would see that I would land on red about one eighth of the time, and I would land on green about half the time, and purple about one fourth the time. Because we only did eight spins, our results can sometimes get a little bit skewed, okay? But if we were to do more and more spins, a hundred spins or a thousand spins, we would see those actual results getting closer and closer to what the probability is in theory. The more trials you have, the more samples you have, the more it's going to turn out like your probability figures. Okay, so just be aware of that when you are doing experiments involving probability.